Hello and welcome to Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name is Andy. And I'm Drew. This is our little 10 minute window to the rest of the world. And tonight we're talking about paranormal aspects in 60s comedies. Ooh. It's a good thing these shows were made back in the day because if they were made now, the, you know, PC groups would be all over these people. The main one that comes to mind is, of course, Bewitched. Now, Bewitched is a comedy from the 60s that the concept was the woman was a witch who falls in love with a mortal. Now, in this TV show, of course, being a sitcom, they do play off the stereotype of the witch being the Ab abnormal, the uh, paranormal world, and it's a fantasy element of which, but had this show been made nowadays, it would be wicked. And it would be no sense of humor because you can't, apparently you can't make humorous jokes about anything of that nature. They actually did make a movie based on a TV show with Nicole Kidman. Yes, but still, the only reason that movie was even made is because they had already pre-established the fact that the character was Samantha and she was likable and your mother was not, and it was a classic, um, yeah. Mother-in-law jokes and stuff, things like that. It had Will Ferrell in it. Yeah. It had Will Ferrell and... The movie had Will Ferrell in it, yeah. The movie itself. And on a side note, the premiere of that movie caused a little bit of controversy actually in the small town of Salem, Massachusetts. Yep. For its anniversary, they put a statue of Samantha from Bewitched in the downtown plaza. Now, I remember when it's first said you were going to do this, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, whatever. People were in an uproar about this. This is the great part. People were in an uproar in, Mass in Salem, Massachusetts for the over-commercialization of witches. Um, yeah. And they're, they're, they're the witch city. It's their, it's their tourism. It's on their freaking flag. It's on the police patch. The police uniforms have a witch. It's just, it's their town seal. Yes. So, uh, witch in the moon. I know. It, it was it was just ridiculous. So chill act, okay? It's, you're the witch city. Deal with it. I'd wear it on my sleeve like a badge of honor. I would too. Now, of course, the one-two punch of the main two paranormal elements in the uh, 1960s comedies, yeah. it would be one of my personal favorites, I Dream of Genie. I Dream of Genie. I mean, how, how amazing is that? Of course, again, if this were made nowadays, it would probably be blasphemy. Actually, it was kind of blasphemy back then. That was what the big stir from the women's rights groups were really against her referring to him as master. Well, that was that was one part of it. The other part was that she was never married to him. You know, that was the other thing. You got to understand. Back in the '60s, the diver the idea of family was you were married, then you lived together. In this situation, she was. Um, you know, uncovered by him. He's an astronaut. Mm -hmm. He finds the bottle on the, on the beach. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, she's living with him. But living that, in sin. Living in sin. The 60s was like that time between the 50s and today. It was when the sexual revolution really hit. Playboy really became... You gotta understand. Things that are normal today uh, were would be absolutely Cabo. abnormal like 50 years ago. It's still in syndication to this day. Yeah. Bewitched and I Jimmy G took on a whole new fan base during the 80s mm -hmm. when the parents of that time had kids that were growing up over the age to watch that show. It had a resurgence of uh, fan because because of channels like Nick at Night. Oh, yeah. And, um, and you know, channels that were just showcasing these old TV shows from back then. It wasn't looked upon nearly as taboo as you know in the 80s being 30 years ago and now today it's kind of like pfft, geez. we have webcast tv shows that say stuff like damn i'd like to have one of her <laughs> moving on Go. now in the 1960s there was of course one other um 60s horror comedy show that really was wacky and altogether ooky i'm talking of course about the adams family <laughs> You're so hung up on Morticia. Dude, I'm serious. I don't know if it's just because I'm of the age now mm -hmm. to really appreciate someone of that character or, you know, it's just something, you know, there's something about her that's just resonates to hotness. She's a, she's a MILF. Well, it wouldn't surprise me. Monster. MILF. MILF. Monster MILF. Because we can't bring up the Adam family without bringing up the sister show from the opposite opposing network, the Monsters. The Monsters. I, I 
swear, that show is classic, like 1960s. So this is an excellent example of something you see back then, but you would never see nowadays. You would never see that much plagiarism, yeah. that plagiarism accepted yeah. between major networks. Because the major, major networks back then, they, they weren't really against each other so much as they were kind of like, we got you, viewers. NBC had their viewers, CBS had their viewers, PBS had their viewers, and ABC had their viewers. There was a little give and take between times, and it, but like they didn't have March sweeps, and you know they weren't fighting for ratings and stuff like this back in those days as much. I mean, it was there, but it was never as much in the foreground. So you know, Munsters and Adams Family being two t TV shows very similar in style, very similar yeah. in nature, could coexist. But there's just so much more show now, there's so many more programs. It's kind of like a thousand fish fighting for the one piece of fish. Food. Exactly. Another example, sir. Give us one. You see, you've already talked about Bewitched. You've already talked about. Um, you've already talked about. Bewitched. Uh, I did Cream Genie. Genie. Done the, the monsters. Adam's family. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think because that's Dude. that's the top four. Those are the two big. Those are the four big ones. But you know, I mean. While he's struggling his brain, I'm going to bring up my favorite Martian. Oh, there you go. Are you through? <laughs> now, what are you waiting for me to say? Take me to your leader? Primetime hasn't done that kind of thing for a while. And that's my point in this episode. We need to go back and have I Dream of Genie and do it in the modern day comedy fair. Get the maker creator there, Chuck Lorre from um, Big Bang Theory. Get him on to creating a new I Dream of Genie or I, a new Bewitched. If you could pick one of those shows to be done on television again, which one? Like if Honest to God, I would I, I would pitch them as a two hour, two half hour sitcoms and call it the um, the Power Hour or something. The power Hour. Just you have to you got to do them both. Otherworldly. You got to do you got to do, do them both. I'm still waiting for the I Dream of Genie movie. People get on it. My father. The car. How about that one? That's another one. Mr. Ed. Hello, <laughs> I'm Mr. Ed. Hello, you, you I'm Mr. Red. You don't get much more creepier than that. The talking horse. Hello. Yeah, that one was just like, you know, ideas for television back in the 50s and 60s were kind of limited, you know? They didn't exactly have, like, like if you were to come, if, if Mr. Red didn't exist and you came today and you were like, went to a high level executive meeting and said, I got a great idea for a show. It's about a guy who lives alone and his horse talks. Hello. The guy would be like sent. He would be like sent to this mental institution. That's true. I mean, I can argue. He would be like everybody like this guy is nuts. Up his dose. Yes, I mean, well, that's all we have time for. Almost heading back to the story here. My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. Bring back the old classic paranormal comedies, and let's start making fun of these things again, the old-fashioned American way. Don't touch let's that dial. Good night. Good night. Hello.